Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Design Pritcha podcast. If you are new here and this is your first episode, Design Pritcha means design stories. And I'm a product designer and I like to talk about designs. So far, this podcast has been in Serbian. Right now, we're switching it up. I mean, I am. So today, I'm going to talk about a topic that I'm so excited to talk about because it's been years into making, and that is a UX review of Tinder. It is going to be hot. You know it's going to be hot. <laughs> Unless you live under a rock, you have heard about Tinder. So you know it exists. You might think it's bad, you might think it's good, you might use it, you might not. You might be using it hush hush, you know what I mean? You might be using it just for fun, just to be on a lookout who's around you, whatnot. And just for people that might not know what Tinder is and what I'm talking about, although I really doubt there are. Oh, there is a lot of you. Um, Tinder is a dating app uh, that matches you. Well, it's a whole system. I will explain. And what it's really for hooking up, meeting new people, um, finding love, whatever you want it to be. But basically what Tinder says it is, it's uh, the way to meet the most people with the least amount of time. So, I would say, from my experience, it's a numbers game. Meaning, you will meet a lot of people. Some of them will be, I don't know, love. Some of them will be friends. So, it depends, really, what you want. Basically, I'm going to talk about how hard it is to be a product designer and use an app for a few years. So, I've seen the evolution of Tinder. I started using it... Um, I don't know when, I, I cannot even remember, a long time ago. And I used it a couple of times, um, deleted it, bring it back on, you know, the drill. That's how you usually use Tinder. Like you find love, then you delete it, then you come back again, if you want to. And I was starting to think like, why is Tinder such a popular app? Why does it work? What's the deal? How does it work? The whole source of my frustration started with the messaging part of the app. So from there, I wanted to see why the messaging part is so bad. And then I got into the whole UX review, which I'm going to share with you. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the beginning, and that is with facts. I've read, and I will list the link of my resources in the description of the episode, I've read that 40% people in America met through an app or a website and only 6% meet um, at a bar and those are facts from before COVID. So just imagine the whole pandemic thing that happened and the dating atmosphere right now. We are all on Tinder or some other app even if we don't want to admit it. Match Group is the owner of Tinder. They own Hinge, they own a couple of other, couple, 14 other apps, uh, mostly for dating and whatnot. And Tinder, whether you believe it or not, kind of uh, was made because of the iPhone, the first iPhone. So that was a major thing that happened in, in the history. So in 2007, uh, the first iPhone came to be and a lot of apps were forced to go mobile. Match.com was one of those apps and in 2009 it went mobile, but it wasn't really working that well. And, and Tinder brought something that was so revolutionary at the time and that was the swipe. So nobody used that and like imagine those were kind of like primitives, primitive phones compared to the ones we have today. Um, and then you have something that's a swipe and that, first of all, added the fun to dating. Dating before that was mostly uh, some web applications and some primitive mobile ones, but it was not really fun. It was more um, dry, I would say, dry. 
Tinder changed that and that was a big deal and everybody wanted to participate and that's why it became so popular so fast. So to kind of try and understand Tinder a bit more, I will start at the beginning and that's the onboarding process, like the process where you are registering basically. One of the first things that Tinder asks of you when you start the onboarding process is your phone number. And that is because they want to reduce scams. They want to reduce fel uh, false profiles. Uh, something that they added quite recently was the passions. And I think this is really good. One of the things that I found that Tinder lacks is more in-depth information about the person. And there is a reason why they don't have that. Okay, but they added the passion so they could match you more easily. What's interesting about the onboarding part of the app is uh, actually the number of screens. There is a lot of screens. There is a lot of things you have to put in before you enter the app. And that usually can be a problem. Sometimes users can decide not to register because the register is too boring, it's too long. But with Tinder, I think they can afford it because people know before they start the register process, they know what they're registering for. They know what it looks like. like if you don't know what Tinder is or what it looks like, wow, I am amazed how you managed to do that. Now, the main thing basically is the algorithm. How does even Tinder match. Like, first of all, they use the Elo system. Elo system is a system that is used in chess. It's a rating system with points. Um, you can look it up if you want to know in details. And that's what Tinder used up until 2019. Uh, now, we don't really know for sure if Tinder is still using this or not, but they did change some things. And now it's not only scores. Uh, and how they kept scores is basically on the amount of actions you had in the app. Like, did you swipe constantly without talking to anyone? Did you message with anyone? Did you, I don't know, super liked? And I'm talking about the free version in this video completely. I will not talk too much about the, the ones that you pay. One of the ways uh, Tinder was matching people is with location. Somebody who is close to you. Um, but that didn't really work that well, so they needed other other ways to match people. Pairs based on your previous swiping, meaning if the profile that you swiped right had multiple images, it had Instagram connected, it had Spotify connected, it had a uh, description, it had the passions, it had everything filled out that you can fill out most likely you will get the next the next um, profile will be similar and Tinder will give you profiles that have Spotify connected if that's the most likes you get to people who have Spotify connected. So that's another way of how they match you with other people. I mean they meaning the algorithm it's not really people doing the job like no <laughs> no. And of course, at some point, you come to an end of people. And then when that's when the recycling happens. So sometimes you get profiles that you unmatched. Sometimes you get profiles that uh, you just said no to. So some profiles do get recycled a little bit. And then there is this thing where with a super like. So you have a limited amount of super likes with the free version, but of course the point is to pay to get extra features. So one of the features that you can pay for is the super like, meaning uh, when you do that, the algorithm will ignore all the previous rules I talked about and will put you at the top of the list for, for somebody. Yeah, and then there is this one thing, like for people who like to just swipe no, 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 just to look what's up, there is the 100 right swipes a day feature. I think you can pay to not have that. I'm not sure. Now, another important part of Tinder and the whole system is gamification they use. And they use something that's been used um, 
in casinos for a long time. Variable ratio reinforcement schedule is basically a schedule that gives you reward without any um, specific order. So maybe you'll get, if you, if you swipe once, you will get a reward, which would be a match. If you swipe three times, nothing will happen and so on, so on. So it keeps you coming back. That's how the slot machines work. So you never know when you're going to hit the jackpot with the slot machines. The same thing is used in Tinder as well. Another similarity to slot machines is the match screen. The match screen is amazing. Like that's a, a, an example of good UX and good UI. Also kind of mean, also kind of evil, but still it works. It really works well. So when you get a new match, you get a screen, no matter what you did before in the app where you were, like somebody liked you back, it just appears on your screen. It's there in your face. You have a match. And it's literally like a slot machine. You have hit a jackpot. And it's all over your screen and you have to do something about it. You have some call to actions. You don't have to do it right now. You can do it later, but still, it catches your attention, it stops whatever you were doing previously. Now, the reason why that's kind of tricky is because you were, if you were texting with someone before that and boom, you have a new match, you just might leave that person hanging to see who the new match is. So there are some questions about Tinder, whether if it's a good um, app to find love or whatnot. So there is a good movie. I will link it down below if anybody wants to um, look at it. So basically all of this, what it is, it's a dopamine shot. So basically you get instant gratification. It's a game. That's it. It's fun to use. It's serious what you're doing. Those are real people on the other end. You are a real person. But it's a game. That's how it was set. Like we're talking about a product basically here about UX. Because of that, Tinder has a fast paced communication because of the gamification they have right there. And partly the reason why messaging's messaging system is so bad is kind of because of that. So it's meeting the most people for the least amount of time. That's the whole point of, of Tinder. Like what are you gonna do with those people? That's another thing. But my idea of their messaging part of the app is that it's stupid and it lacks so much. We have really high standards for messaging apps these days. We have reply. That's You don't even have a reply on Tinder. But And, and I spent so much time thinking why. Landed to a conclusion. It doesn't matter. They don't want you to uh, spend hours and hours... Um, texting with someone, they want you to meet people. Tinder might be a little superficial, a lot superficial, but at least it's honest. I think that there are no hidden agendas in theory, okay? There is some evil UX, but it's basically how you use it. It really depends how you use it. But they are telling you, like, we are going to give you the infinite pool of dating options and i'm really interesting to see what's going to happen next with the metaverse will it merge will tinder be a part of the metaverse will we do like online virtual dating things i mean we already have the video um option in tinder i cannot wait to see what will happen so i guess we are all gonna stay tuned and be on the lookout. Thank you for listening. If you want to listen more or watch more, please subscribe. Which app should I do next?